In today's video, you're going to learn how to create text that goes over and underneath a subject on Photoshop. So this is actually kind of an advanced and a beginner's tutorial. Uh, so make sure you watch until the end of the video to learn all of the steps from start to finish. So if you want to follow along with this tutorial, I've got all the links to this uh, image in the description below and also where you can download this font in the description below. So let's get started. So if you wanted to follow along with this tutorial, I'll leave a link to this image in the description below. So let's right click and copy the image and open up Photoshop and let's click on create new. You can also go file and click on new and this window should open up. So Photoshop should automatically pick up the width and the height of the image that you just copied. But if it doesn't, just put in these numbers right here and make sure the measurement is on pixels and leave the resolution on 72 pixels per inch and the color mode on RGB. So let's click on create. And this is the canvas we're going to work with. So let's press control V or command V if you're on a Mac to paste the image or just go up to edit and click on paste. So first thing we need to do is crop out the background. So there's a few ways of doing this. On one, some of the latest versions of Photoshop, there's this new option called Select Subject. So if you click on the image layer, so if you don't see this Layers panel, just go to Windows and click on Layers right here. So click on the image layer and click uh, go up to Select and click on Subject. So Photoshop uh, is automatically going to check what is the subject of this photo and it's going to select it. But as you can see, it's not that accurate and not every single version of Photoshop will have this option. So still the best way to select a subject from a Photoshop and crop out the background is the pen tool. So the pen tool is right here. So if you click and hold, there's a few options like free form pen tool or curvature pen tool, but just choose the normal pen tool right here. And then we're going to choose the zoom tool and we're going to zoom in. So uh, now go back to the pen tool and make sure right here at the top, it's path, not shape. So it should be on the path option right here. So click on the path option and we're simply just going to draw an outline all the way around the subject. So this is going to require some time and some patience, but this is the most accurate way to select um, a subject from a, a Photoshop and the most and to get the most realistic effect. So what I'm going to do is just speed up the video and I'm just going to select all the way around the entire subject. And then I'll show you how to select some of these other complicated parts here soon. And let's say you've made a mistake and you selected some of the wrong parts. You can just undo that by pressing Control Z or Command Z if you're on a Mac. Just uh, press and hold Control or Command and just keep pressing Z until you go back to where you made the mistake. And then you can just redo it um, uh, again. So what I've just done is I've created an entire outline right around the entire uh, the uh, subject. But we still need to crop out this middle part right here and I'll show you how to do that soon. But let's just crop out the background now. So what you need to do is choose the uh, pen tool again. Right click inside of the middle of the selection. So that's right in the middle and click on make selection and make sure the feather radius is on zero and make sure this is ticked on and it's on new selection and just click on OK. And you're going to see this dashed outline shape. That means that is a selection. So now what we can do is we can just delete the background or we can hide the background. So usually what I do is I hide the background. So if we make a mistake, we can always just reveal what we've hidden. So the way you hide the background is with the masking tool. The way you delete something is either with the delete button or the eraser tool. But usually I don't um, uh, delete things, I usually hide them. 
So choose layer one. Let's just rename this to um, image and choose Im the image layer and just click on this little icon, which is the little circle and a square icon. So that's right next to the FX icon right here. And that's automatically just going to uh, hide the background. So now we have a nice clean cropped uh, image. Now the middle part is easy. It's just the same thing again. You just choose the pen tool and we're simply just going to draw an outline all the way around the uh, background right here. So let's just draw all the way around and we're going to hide this in a different way now. So I'll show you how to, what, what to do soon. So let's just go all the way around again just like before. And I'm going to right click in the middle, click on make selection and click on OK. So now we have the selection. So you can't just click on the masking tool again and uh, it's going to hide the background. It's not going to hide the background anymore. So right here, uh, right next to the image la um, layer, there's this new box. So if I press and hold the Alt key and that's the option key if you're on a Mac and click on that box, you can see this. So this is the masking canvas. So anything that's black, is hidden and anything that's white is revealed. So what we can do is take a paintbrush and choose a black color and we're going to paint this selection in black. So we're going to paint that in black. So since we painted that section in black, that selection in black, it's going to hide that part of the image. So now you can deselect this by pressing Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac. And if you press and hold Alt again or Command if you're on a Mac and click back on that masking box, you can see that middle part is hidden now. So now we have a nice clean crop looking image, but there's still a few little adjustments that we can do. So you can see there's a little bit of uh, the background right around here. So what we can do with this is let's just zoom out. Uh, what we can do is let me just push this into the middle. We're going to press and hold control or command if you're on a Mac and click on the masking box. So what that does is it's going to select everything within that box, which is the selection that we made. So now we have a, 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 the selection of what we cropped. And now uh, what we, what, but, but what we want is we want this to be selected a bit more accurately. So what you can do is go to select and go to modify and click on contract. So you can contract what you've selected by one pixel or two pixels. So I'm gonna contract it by one pixel. So you can see it's slightly contracted what we selected. So let's contract it by another pixel. So I just want it to be around that green area. So I think we've got it just right there. So let's just zoom out. So now what you can do is you can click the masking box again choose a black color to hide and let's just zoom around to this shoe area right here we're gonna hide or oh, oops let me just oh, i forgot to do one more thing so i'm actually i'm actually glad i made this mistake because this is a uh, mistake me people make uh commonly so let's undo that by pressing ctrl z or command z if you're on a mac so what happened is when i tried to erase this edge right here it started erasing the subject that's because right now we have the subject selected so what we need to do is select everything else except for the subject. So go to select and click on inverse. So now what we've just done is we've selected everything else around the subject except for the subject itself. So now you can zoom in, choose the paintbrush tool and make sure you have the masking box selected right here. And we're going to choose a black color as well. And we're just going to hide parts of those edges right here. So I'm being a little bit more picky right now, but you don't if you if you don't want to be this accurate, then you don't need to be. But usually I try to be as accurate as possible with all of my selections to get all the edges right. So maybe you can also get rid of some of these edges around here, maybe some bits around here, and maybe around his arms as well. So you can't really see much around there, but usually the selection will look pretty good. So now let's deselect that. So you can see now it's much better now. So now we, ha we have a nice clean selection. Now we just need to type the text over it and make it go under and over the subject. So to add in the text, you need to click on this little T icon right here. So click on the T icon and just click anywhere on the canvas and you should see some text come up. So 
your, your text might be in a different font or in a different size. So you can adjust all the fonts and the sizes right here. So right here, this is where you change the font. So you might have some different fonts to mine. So these are the fonts that I've downloaded. Uh, there's many different places to download free fonts. Uh, Google Fonts is a great uh, website. Uh, Dell Fonts is a great uh, website. Uh, I'll make another video on that soon. But Photoshop should automatically come up, uh, uh, should come with some great fonts that you can already use. So Impact should be one, uh, should be in there. Uh, you can also use Courier and many other different fonts. So I'm going to use this one called Enter. This is actually a free font as well. It's, it's I-E-N-T-E-R. You can download that from Google Fonts. So let's choose that. And I'm just going to move that to the middle right about here. Let's type in the first uh, word, which is ready. And I'm going to type it in all caps as well. So let's make this a little bit bigger by just highlighting it and increasing the font right here to maybe I'll make it about 500. There we go. And I'll just move that down just about there. And what I'm going to do is create an extra copy of the image layer. And I'm going to hide the original image layer right here. So the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to start editing this image a little bit, like resizing it and changing up the colors and stuff. So if I make a mistake, I can just go back to the original image layer right here. So let's choose the image copy layer. And I'm just going to resize it and make it a little bit smaller. And place the subject right here. And yeah, maybe about there. And what I want to do is make the A and the D go behind them. So let's maybe, actually I want to kind of, oops, let me just undo that. Yes, let me, I just want to position it just right but I want to make it also easier to read as well. Uh, we can kind of play around with that later on, but uh, let's just leave it as it is for now. So what, what you can do is press and hold control or command if you're on a Mac, and then we're gonna um, s uh, click on the masking box right here, and that's gonna make a selection of the subject. Then click on the text layer, and then we're gonna inverse the selection. So now everything is selected except for the subject. So now if I choose the text layer and click on the masking box, it's gonna keep this part, but hide all of these parts right here. So it looks like the, the subject is kind of going over the, uh, the, the uh, text. But now you can take this even further. So let's say you want this A, this part of the A to be kind of coming over him. So, what you can do now is click on the masking box of the text layer, choose the uh, choose the paintbrush tool, choose a white color to reveal. So what we're doing is revealing the text layer right here. So you need to choose a white color to reveal and just reveal the A right here as well. So let's see what that looks like. So let's just zoom out. So I think that looks pretty cool. So now let's do the next letter, which is set. So let's uh, choose the text tool again and I'm just going to type in set and uh, it's coming out in white so let's just select this and du double click on the color picker tool choose a black color and click on OK and later on we're going to change the colors and all that but I'm just going to leave it black for now so I'm going to leave this right here so maybe uh, this could uh, this could go right underneath uh, his arms right here and also under his chin so to do this, we need to reselect the arms. So I'm just going to lower the opacity of the set layer right here to just about doesn't need to be any particular number, just to the point where we can actually see the arms behind them. And uh, we're going to choose the pen tool again, and we're going to select the arms. So just all the way around the arms doesn't need to be perfectly accurate, but just as accurate as we selected the subject before. So just select it, select them all the way around these outlines. And you don't need to go all the way around here. Just select, just go around to this point right here. And you don't need to worry about all of these parts right here because uh, the letter doesn't really go over it. So you can just connect this back and just click on OK. So now we have a selection. So just like before, I just clicked in the middle of the selection and clicked on make selection. So now uh, let's up the opacity again. 
and I'm going to uh, inverse this selection. So instead of selecting the arm, I'm going to select everything else around it. So let's go select and click on inverse. So now if I click on the masking tool, it's going to hide uh, what is not selected and keep what is selected. So right now what is selected is everything else around this, this arm because we made a selection of this arm and then we inversed that selection. So if I click on the masking box, it's going to put, uh, it's going to hide that part of the selection and it's going to um, keep this, uh, this part of the lettuce, which was not selected. So now uh, we've kind of got this illusion of this text kind of going underneath his arms. So it's that simple. So just like before, we're going to uh, lower the opacity again. And this time we're just going to choose the masking box right here. And we're just going to choose a black color to hide and choose the paintbrush tool. And we're simply just going to reveal parts of his chin. So let's zoom out. So that looks good. So let's up the opacity. So all of that looks pretty good. So I think that looks, we've got the effect so far. The next one is go. So just like before, I'm going to choose the text tool and just click on the middle of the canvas and just type in go in all caps. So let's put that right underneath set right here. So I think that'll look pretty good with the O right here and with the G kind of going underneath the arm. So uh, just like before, I'm going to uh, lower the opacity so we can see the arm uh, behind him. And let's just zoom in. And I'm just going to select the arm. So let's choose the pen tool and let's just do a selection just like this. So it should just go right around the arm like this, all the way around. And if the letter isn't going over the um, the image, then don't worry about being accurate around there. You can just select go all the way around it. So let's just go all the way around here. Maybe even get these parts around here as well. And so I think just about here. So that looks good. So I think that looks good. Yeah, I think that looks good just about there. So let's just uh, create an outline and create a, uh, click on make selection. Just like before, I'm going to inverse the selection and click on the masking tool. And let's up the opacity. So this is what we've got so far. So now you can reveal parts of the G around here by clicking on the masking box and choose a white color to reveal. And just reveal parts of the G just around here. So let's just zoom in a little bit so we can actually make an accurate selection. So uh, also make the brush a little bit smaller. So it looks good just around those little tight corners and also around those little white out outlines so we can actually get a nice accurate selection. So I think that looks good. So let's just zoom out, see what this looks like so far. Yep, so I think that looks good so far. And so it says ready, set, and go. So now what you can do with this is you can actually make the letters bigger and smaller. So maybe the set could be a bit smaller. Maybe the ready could take up the part, a large part of the canvas. And then you need to re-edit the um, letters again. So Click on ready and I'm just going to resize this by uh, resize this by pressing control T. Uh, whoops, so I made a mistake there. So I clicked on the masking box right here. You should click on the letter right here. So on the layers panel, instead of clicking on the mark masking box, click on the text icon right here. So now when you press control T, you actually resize the letter. Before, if you press the masking box, you resize the entire masking box. So you don't want that, you want to resize the T. And also what you want to do is, you want to, this is a little clip icon between the text and the masking box. So you want to clip that off. So uh, what, what happens now is, 
So now let's say you uh, you click on the text icon and press Control T, and you try to resize it. It's going to uh, stay hidden behind the subject. So if I didn't clip that um, little clip, um, if I didn't clip that uh, little clip off, it's it would have uh, it would have it wouldn't have stayed behind the subject. So you need to clip that off. So let's just resize all of this and so it looks good so we can edit all of this later on so right now it looks a bit off uh looks really off but we're gonna uh, we're gonna edit this quite a bit later on so we're just gonna place the text nicely and hit enter so that looks good so next let's do set so just like before i'm gonna click off the little clip icon right here and click on the text icon right here on the layers panel and press Control t or command t to resize this so i'm not going to resize this too much because i already i think this already looks pretty good so I'm just gonna resize it just a little bit so I think that looks good there so I'm just gonna hit enter and this let's just leave it at that and go I'm gonna maybe move this down a little bit more so maybe just a little bit further down there and let's just resize it a little bit more So with the letter, oh, that actually looks pretty good. Maybe we can actually make, so I just made a mistake there and found out we can actually do something quite creative. We can actually make his thumb kind of go underneath the G like that. So I think that looks, that's actually a cool effect that we can go for. So maybe also this can kind of go over the arms as well. Or maybe his hand could kind of go over it. So let's just play around with this. Um, so now what I'm going to do is click, click those little uh, clips back on choose the masking box and I'm just going to reveal these parts of these T's right here I mean these are uh, letters right here and so I'm going to choose a white color to reveal make the brush size a little bit bigger and let's just make this a little bit bigger around here so what I just did there is I uh, I'm going to lower the opacity so I can actually see what I'm hiding let's just zoom in a little bit there and I'm going to hide parts of this later now because I revealed a bit too much. So let's just hide all of these little bits right here. So what I'm going to do is choose the pen tool and just make like an accurate kind of straight selection like this. And now I can hide that part more accurately. So that looks good. So let's zoom out. So I think all of these bits look pretty good. So I'm going to leave that. So over here with set, let's just, uh, lower the opacity here again. And I'm going to hide all of these parts right here. So it should kind of, kind of go under his chin and kind of under his neck as well. So let's see what this will look like. So let's hide all of these parts right here. So I think that looks good. And let's also hide these bits right here as well when it goes under his shoulder. And let's also hide it under his, his arms as well. So let's zoom out. So let's up the opacity and see what all of that looks like. So I think that looks a bit off. So what I might do is just reveal all of this right here around his neck. So I think that looks a bit better. So let's just zoom out. Yep, I think that looks a lot better, but we can just move the set text just down just a little bit more so you can see what I just did there um, so I, I forgot to clip this off and when I tried to actually move this down you can see it's kind of it's going down with the subject without the subject sorry so let's just undo that and if I clip that off and I click on the text icon now when I try to move it down it goes down with the subject so that's a it is it sounds a little bit complicated, but it's easy to get when you actually practice this a little bit more. So let's up, up the opacity on ready as well, so that looks good. And this part, so I just want the thumb to kind of go underneath 
the arm. So let's reveal the G. And let's also, so with the arm, I'm just gonna right uh, press control and get the selection of the arm. And I'm just gonna choose a white color to hide. I'm just gonna hide that right here. And also hide all of these bits right here as well. So I actually should have hide, hidden that, so I made a mistake there, sorry. So let me just zoom back out. And it's also, I'm just going to also add an exclamation mark right here as well. So I think that looks pretty cool. So, so far I think that looks pretty cool. So now all we need to do is just kind of change the uh, color, increase the contrast of the subject so we can actually see it better. And also change the background colors so we can actually use the right color palettes and make this better. So next I'm going to give it a gray background and this should be like a really light gray. So I'm just going to choose the paint bucket tool here and just choose a black color. I'm just going to paint it in black and then just lower the opacity to the point where it's just just the right gray. So just about there, I think about 24 percent. I think it looks good there, but we can uh, edit this uh, later on. And also I'm going to change the color of the text all the text to white. So I'm just going to highlight the text. So choose the text um, uh, tool click on the text, highlight it, choose the color picker tool at the top, choose a white color and click on OK. So just do that to all the other uh, text as well. So just highlight this, choose a white color and click on OK. And also to this text as well, choose a white color, click on OK. So I think it actually looks better in uh, white. And also we can uh, increase the brightness and the contrast of the subjects because right now it's kind of hard to see the subject so click on the image copy layer and then choose right here which is like a half circle icon and uh, that's right next to the uh, masking icon and if you click on that there's a few options right here so click on brightness and contrast and you should see this properties panel come up right here so if you don't see this click go to windows and click on properties so I'm going to increase the contrast just a little bit on the subject. So to the point where it just gets dark enough so we can actually see it. So before it looked like this, and now it looks like this. And we can also increase the brightness or decrease the brightness, but I think it looked good at zero. So I'll just click on zero. And you can also click on auto right here and it will just automatically pick up all the the brightness and contrast and do it for you. So if you like that effect, you can leave it at that or you can just do it on, on your own. So I, I think I actually liked it at zero right here and at 69 on the um, contrast. So that looks good. And I also just noticed I made a mistake on the letter G right here. So let's just fix that quickly by revealing this part of the G. So there we go. So it looks better. And let's just zoom out. So I think all of this looks good so far, but what would make this even better is if we add some shadows going under and over the letters and on the subject. So to do this, uh, we, we're going to go to the set tool right here. First, let's just do it on the uh, on the G. So I'm going to press and hold control or command if you're on a Mac and get that selection. And then I'm going to inverse that selection. And what I'm going to do is create a new layer and call this new layer Go Shadow. So the, I'm just calling it Go Shadow because the shadow it's the shadow of the word Go. So let's just type in Shadow. And I'm going to choose the Paintbrush tool and choose the hardness to be at 0%. And I'm just going to paint, uh, whoops, let me just uh, do that again. Again, let me just inverse the selection. So what I just did is I forgot to inverse the selection. So I started painting inside of it. So I want it to be around the edge. So I need to inverse this by going select and click on inverse. And now I can actually paint around it. So also uh, what I forgot to do, so I forgot to do one more thing. So I couldn't actually see the shadow when I was painting it. That's because the layer of the shadow is uh, below the go layer so I need to put it above it so let me just undo that just 
undo that again. Let's just put that right here. I'm just going to paint in just around there so it kind of looks like a shadow just around these edges as well. And it's quite dark right now, but we're going to fix that later on. And so that looks good. So I'm going to deselect that and I'm just going to lower the opacity now and see what that looks like. So I'm going to lower the opacity quite a bit. But I think that looks good, pre uh, pretty good there. So let's just zoom out. Yeah, I think that looks good there. So what you can do is you can also just zoom back in and you can kind of add in a little bit more shadows if you wanted to. So select it again, inverse the selection again and just add in a bit of shadows here and there. So again, I forgot to inverse the selection properly. So I need to do that part one more time. So let me just do that right. There we go. So I think that looks good. So now you just do that to all of these bits right here as well. So let's do that to the next one, which is set. And just like before, I'm going to create a new layer, rename this to set shadow. And I'm going to choose the uh, brush tool again and just add in a little bit of shadow here, maybe a little bit around here. So not too much, just the right amount. And I think that looks good just as it is. So that looks really good actually, it quite, looks quite realistic. And now around here, um, maybe just a tiny bit around here as well. So we need to fix that part later on as well. Uh, so for this, what we can do is we can just select the subject, the outline of the subject, and create another layer and call this ready layer, ready shadow, sorry. And I can inverse the selection again. I can just add a little bit of shadows around here. So remember, you have to have the brush hardness at 0%, otherwise you won't get those soft edges. So make sure the brush hardness is at 0%. Uh, Let's also kind of get these edges around here as well. And I'm also going to fix this right here. So let's go back here to the, so you need to hide this part of the image. So choose a black color. We can just hide this. So let's increase the dark uh, hardness of the brush so we can get those nice edges. So I think that looks good as it is, but let's just zoom out and have a look. Then we can lower the opacity of this shadow layer on the ready. So that looks good. And let's also just add one more shadow going over the subject right here. So I'm going to click on ready, create another layer for ready shadow. And let's inverse the selection. Oops, so what I just did is I forgot to lower the uh, hardness of the brush to be at 0%. You can see what it looks like without it being 0%. So let's undo that. So let's go back to the uh, brush tool right here. Let's also make sure everything is inversed and I'm going to paint some shadows. So over here, I just noticed the A, kind of the bridge of the A kind of goes over here. So I have to kind of do this part manually. So let me just undo this. And so I have to kind of do this part manually. So let me just, so there we go. So that looks good. So let's zoom out. Let's lower the opacity. So I think that looks good there. So now we've got, this is how you add text going over and under some uh, a, a subject on Photoshop. So I hope this, uh, you found this video um, helpful. Uh, remember you can do so many different things with this. You can add different colors, different fonts, 
different subjects, uh, different ways, uh, ways of cropping and masking. And this is a bit more advanced and a bit more takes a bit more time to crop the image right. You have to recrop it to put it underneath the image and all of that. So it does require some patience and some time. So if you made it this far into the video, make sure you hit that like button. I've got many videos coming out, not just on Photoshop, on 3D editing with um, Blender, Illustrator tutorials, character designs, design principles. I've got many videos planned. So make sure you, uh, you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload those videos. So I'll see you in the next video.